chance I'd had to get into town all week. We'd been so busy with the harvest, there hadn't been any time. But what I had to see Len Cotterill about couldn't be put off any longer. Hello, Harry. Hello, Len. Come on in. Look, well, thanks. Sit down, Harry. Uh, thanks. How's Myra and the children? Oh, they're fine. Just yes, oh. fine. Well, what can I do for you, Harry? Well, I thought maybe I could uh, try you loose from some of that money you're sitting on. Well, how much were you thinking about this time? Well, I was uh, hoping to arrange about, uh, oh, say, uh, $1,200. That's a lot of money. I could probably do with some less. What do you want it for? Well, I need some stock. Gosh, I wish I could help you, Harry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn you down this time. You know I'm good for the money, Len. I know you are, Harry. If it was just up to me, I'd probably let you have it. But you see, I have to justify any loans I make. I don't see how I can in this case. All right. We had a few bad breaks. There's nothing wrong with the farm, you know that. I quite agree. The place is basically sound, but... Well, frankly, Harry, the way you're operating it isn't. What's the matter with the way I'm operating it? Harry, the business of farming is changing. Your farm is still being run the same way it was ten years ago. And that's not good enough anymore. Every year you lose just a little more ground. That's things I can't control the weather or, uh, or the price of beef. I'm sorry, Harry, but $1,200 is out of the question. Could let you have a couple of hundred if that's any good to you. I'd been dealing with that bank for years. How could Len have turned me down? It wasn't going to be easy to break the news at home. We'd been counting on that money. Carol, you better get a move on. I'm going to need that space in a little while. Well, Mother, if I go any faster, I'll break them. I don't see why she has to bring that mess in the kitchen anyway. I thought you were supposed to be concentrating. Besides, no one asked for your opinion. You better keep quiet. You're going to get something else you didn't ask for. Oh, you really scare me to death. Big, bad gene brand. Mother, will you please tell her to shut up? I wish you'd both shut up. You're getting me a headache. <laughs> will you turn that off? I will, Ma. If you don't like it, why don't you work in your room? Why, you don't to leave me alone. Will you tell her to stop being such a pest? to Charlie Gar. The yeah, egg rip? What for? Well, he's always talking about new methods of farm management, but you always get so mad at him for being nosy. You never give him a chance to say anything. Maybe he can give you some suggestions. 
You want me to go crawling up to Charlie Goss with my tail between my legs and admit I'm licked? Now, you know Charlie isn't like that. He wouldn't look at it that way. Well, I won't do it, Myra. I won't do it. Mama, I'll try to care for the egg. Do you want to go out and flood over right away? You know he hates waiting. All right, dear. usual, Dad. Uh, Jean? Yes, Dad? How about that calf? I, uh... I'm afraid we'll have to wait a little on that. Oh. Yeah, there's... One or two things haven't worked out the way I figured. I know I promised you, but... Oh, oh that's okay, Dad. I don't mind. Well, uh, the minute I have anything to spare, Gene, I'll, uh, well, uh, I promised you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in your case any more than you do. Pigs, maybe. But you've got to admit you haven't been doing too well with beef. But we've been raising beef for years. I know more about cattle than anything. You haven't got the capital or the space for a big enough herd to make it really pay. And meanwhile, your costs aren't staying put. Well, what's the answer, then? You're the one that's got to figure that out. All I can do is give you some help in getting the facts you need to get the right answers. I suppose you mean that management club stuff. Oh, what's the matter with that? A lot of your neighbors belong. I don't like meetings. They're a waste of time. Not these meetings. We bring some good men down, experts from the college and the Department of Agriculture. And besides, you get a chance to trade ideas. Well, I don't know. You're not the only one with problems, you know. The club's been a big help to people around here. What about those records you mentioned? Well, that's part of the club program. Every man keeps accurate records of his operation so that he and our experts will have something definite to work on. If you're losing money, you ought to know why. You want to pinpoint the weak spots. I don't know anything about bookkeeping. <laughs> You'll learn. First, the bookkeeping business was a bit of a puzzle to us, but as Charlie had predicted, we learned. I'm sure we had more receipts than this. I still don't see why I have to list everything twice. A darn nuisance. I wish I'd known we were going to be doing this. I'm sure there's some receipts in there. Well, you just have to be careful from now on. Well, I gotta admit, they didn't do a bad job of setting up this book. They seem to have thought of everything. There's even a place for tools. Oh, for goodness sakes. Here's something I've forgotten all about. Les Myers still owes us for the seed grain you loaned him that time. Hey, you know, that's right. That slipped my mind altogether. Well, don't forget to remind him the next time you see him. Well, Jean? Yes, Dad? Could you come here a minute? Oh, sure, Dad. You've uh, taken some bookkeeping. I just can't seem to find the place to put the lumber we used to fix the barn the last time. 
Let's see. Shouldn't it go here under general farm expenses? Oh, yeah. Thanks. You sure you don't want me to do it, Dad? I don't mind. No, no, it's okay. I've got to learn sometime. See, I wonder what that old binder is worth. Oh, why, Harry, that's just junk. Well, even junk is worth money. I put down $20. What do they do with all these figures once they get them worked out, Dad? Well... According to Charlie, they have some experts in the government who analyze this book and then tell me how to get rich. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, seriously, Dad. Well, I'm no economist, that's for sure, but the way I understand it is they break down these figures and compare what you're doing with other farms in the district. Then you can see whether you're doing better or worse than another man in a similar farm. And why? That makes sense. Better make sense with all the work I'm putting into this. When you're farming, there's no regular time for a job like this. Sometimes we worked at it on days when the weather was bad, more often late at night after the chores were done. As time went on, the book became a reflection of the seasons and of our work on the farm. What it meant in terms of success or failure, we weren't able to tell, yet. With the passing of the weeks and the months, the record of our crops and livestock, of our expenses and earnings, was finally completed, and the book was ready for analysis. Hello, Harry. Good morning, Charlie. Well, here it is. The report. That's right. Came through this morning, so I thought I'd drop it over to you. Well, uh, thanks. Maybe we should go inside. I think there's some coffee on. All right. school, I guess. Well, that boy of yours must be just about through high school by now. Jean graduates next year. Is it going to go on? Well, we were hoping to send him to the agricultural college, at least for the diploma course. He's staying at the farm then? I think so. Of course, a lot depends on how farming looks to him as a career. What's this supposed to be anyway? I don't get you, Harry. Well, they don't credit me with much. <laughs> Harry, there's nothing personal in this. The economists are interested only in what the figures show. You're rated here according to what you should be able to do with what you've got. Land, buildings, and equipment. What do they mean here? Tell me i got to get rid of my cattle. The report doesn't say that, Harry. <laughs> Try and get it through that stubborn skull of yours that nobody's telling you to do anything. This analysis gives you cold, hard facts. What you do with them is your business. But I can't let the cattle go. Nobody's saying you have to. But stop depending on them as your main source of income. According to the report, they're your least profitable enterprise. Fact. It's too slow raising beef. Your farm can't support enough cattle to make it pay. You need something to give you a faster turnover for your primary enterprise. It's true, Harry. We aren't making enough money on the cattle. Harry... You may not like this, but I'm going to tell you the truth about this farm. Now, I've studied these figures. 
You're not making a living now, and if you keep on going the way you are, you're going to lose this place. Mr. God! I'm sorry, Myra, but I don't think it would help for me to say anything less than the truth. This farm's in trouble. You, you really think it's that bad? Well, it's there in the report, Harry, if you're not afraid to draw an honest conclusion. But it doesn't have to be that way. That's in the report, too. But you've got to save your own neck. How? Tell me how. I tried everything. Well, look, Harry. You've got two sows, right? Why not six? Why not a hundred sows? Where's the money going to come from? You show the bank that you're going to improve your labor income and you'll get the money. Oh, you may not be able to do it all at once, but the important thing is you make a start. After that... Maybe they're right. I don't know what to think anymore. What Charlie said today made good sense to me, dear. Maybe. We might be better off to sell the place to clear out and move into town. Harry Brandon, would you mind telling me what you do in town? Well, I could get a job of some kind. I can just see you on a regular job after all these years. Besides, that's not leaving much for Jean, is it? No, I suppose not. I wish I knew what to do. Well, maybe for a change you might listen to some good advice. On the farm, the seasons don't wait while you make up your mind. Life moves on at its own pace. And somehow or other, you have to find a way to move along with it. Are we really going to raise pigs, Dad? I don't know yet. What if we are? Nothing. It's just that you've always said you didn't like pigs. Well, we don't always do what we like. And you'll find out someday. You know, maybe we could use the old horse stable without spending too much. Need a few more entrances. Some fences along here. I remember reading an article about fixing a barn up. A pig probably isn't much to build, Dad, from what I've read. Maybe we could do the work ourselves. Maybe you could have a look through those magazines in the woodshed, see if you can find that article. Okay, Dad. It sure isn't going to be the same around here. Uh, you're right, Gene. Well, maybe that isn't all bad. We think we can handle a thousand chickens at this room. That many? Are you sure? Well, we're willing to try. That's right, Daddy. Well, we'll start with 500 anyway. We'll have to extend the brooder house somehow, and we'll need a bigger brooder. We won't be able to use the kitchen for the eggs anymore, but there's lots of room in the basement for storage. All right. As soon as they take care of setting up for the pigs, we'll get to work on it. Charlie Garth phoned today about the meeting tonight. You going? Oh. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this fellow in the club, Hard Potter, was telling me about his pig setup last time. That sounded pretty good. Thought I might ask him tonight if we can go over and have a look at it. Maybe the club's worth belonging to, after all. Well, doesn't hurt. Get an idea once in a while, I've got to admit. Here's that magazine, Dad. Oh, good. Well, we'll see what this is all about. Today we went to look at Harv Potter's pig setup. He had a loose housing type barn which gave us some good ideas to work into our own plan. Yes. And once we had a plan, it wasn't so hard to talk to Len Cotterill about a loan. It didn't take us long after that to get started on our own pig barn. I did more.
most of the work ourselves. We had it almost finished by the time Myra's 500 baby chicks arrived. How do you like it? All in all, I'd say a pretty good job for a couple of amateurs. Should be finished in a couple of hours. Mm. Oh, say, Gene, listen, do me a favor. There's, uh... Some stuff for your mother in the back of the truck. How about bringing it into the house? Sure, Dad. Hey, Dad! You like him? Like him? Are you kidding? It won't be too late to enter him in the cat club. You can start looking after him right away. I think he's hungry. Myra's chickens had matured into a flock of healthy-looking hens. Their increasing egg production began to keep our new egg room busy several hours a week. What time is it, Mama? Uh, to them. Darn, we'll never get finished by the time Fred gets here. Well, you'll just have to wait. The amount of business we're doing with him these days... He's going to have to learn a little patience. Our major enterprise, though, was to raise pigs. We began gradually building up our breeding stock and increasing the number of animals we were feeding and marketing. Another bunch gone. They sure move a lot faster than cattle. You wouldn't get four shipments of cattle out in the same time. Seems to be working out all right. Bit of a gamble each time, but we're not doing badly. At least we're beginning to produce the volume. Daddy, Daddy, come quick!
Shall we tell him, Mother? Oh, I suppose we might as well. Wow, I was wondering if we were ever going to get TV before it went out of date. Where in the devil did you get that? Bought it. Bought it? That thing must have cost more than $150. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, where did you get money like that? Oh, we cheated a little on the egg money, I guess you might say. Egg money? You bought that from the egg money? Oh, yes. The egg business is very good these days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you beat that? Neither the egg business nor the pig business was ever as good as Carol imagined that night after the fair. On our farm, the rewards of hard work are still small enough. But at least we now have a more reliable measure of the value of our efforts and the worth of our plans. <laughs>